What's happened is, tragically, we have created a tremendous segregation. Yeah. Well, we, a new underclass, if you will, uh, an immigrant underclass, which Sweden never had. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how to deal with it. And we're also running out of money because we have the most expensive welfare system in the world. And now we're trying to deal with it. it nobody knows what to do. Can you guys explain a little bit about how the uh, immigration issue arose that basically this all started just in the last really seven years something like that that uh, a pretty much homogenous society for better or worse decided i think but correct me if i'm wrong i think probably with good intentions by people that weren't thinking that much to bring in a ton of people how, how many immigrants roughly have come in over the last well half decade or so you can take this one i o think over if you take it over a decade um the numbers are all, always changing because they're playing around with them. So it, it depends on how you kind of calculate it. But it is it is a bit over a million people. So okay, so roughly a tenth of the population yeah. came in, let's say, in the last decade from these countries. Um, what do you think the leaders thought exactly was going to happen? The, the, the let's say well intentioned. But do you think maybe I'm giving them too no, much credit? No, no. Let's let's do the well intentioned because I like to give people the benefit of the yeah, doubt. Yeah. I think they were hoping for uh, a multicultural nirvana with you know kebabs, at, you know, and some belly dancing, and, yeah. and that everyone else and a lot of smoked fish. You the, guys are killing it in the smoked <laughs> fish game, by the way. Yeah, we do yeah, have yeah. some delicious that, out of that. That is true. Yeah. But other than that, I think the idea is, if you live in a culture that is so homogenous as Sweden is. You cannot think outside the box of our own culture. They don't even perceive that we have a culture. They probably believe they will become Swedes very quickly when they realize how right and good we are. Yes, mm -hmm. they will become... Turns out, didn't happen. Oh. Yeah, so if we were not to give them the benefit of the doubt, because I, I also, I try not to go to people's motives, and I think the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and I think a lot of these people think they're doing the right thing, but, if, mm. but let's go to the non good motive part. And you're like, <laughs> I think you just wrote a book about it. Yes. I mean, what, what do so, you think these people thought they were doing or what do you think they thought was going to happen? Just when you change demographics that much, a tenth of a population is a huge, huge, huge amount. Well, I think they won't wanted to... Imp so the Social Democrat came into power. Uh, they actually lifted up the working class to a, a, a much better living standard and the idea was as soon as we get them up to middle class living standards they will become true communists and understand that they need to devote everything to the struggle. What happened in reality was that they were perfectly fine with their flat screen TVs. They wanted more flat screen TVs and longer vacation time. They didn't want to join a communist revolution. They became, in essence, uh, well, uh, our equivalent of Republicans, I suppose. So they needed new voters, in a sense. And they invoted, uh, and then they took in a lot of people into the most overregulated labor market in the world. And these people, second generation and third generation immigrants, they're not getting into the system, they're keeping them uh, uh, for the ballot, they want their votes and they, and they keep them on subsidies. And some of these kids, they see that the system is rigged against them and uh, they have no choice. They will be of course they will become gangsters or go off and fight for ISIS after a while. I, not I, all of them, obviously. I think it's important at this point to remember that the people that came in, you know, those individuals, it's not their fault inherently. Yeah. Yeah. You know. They were invited. The, the, well, that's is, why you know, I asked about the intentions and uh, good or bad of the people that brought them in, not these people specifically. No, I, I like to think, you know, crowds always go crazy, <clears throat> um, but individuals are much more reasonable, you know, and somebody is, you know, fleeing a war. You know, I have the deepest sympathy. Yes, of course, I would do the same thing. But it is irresponsible if you have a so regulated labor market and you, you take in more people than you can help. It, that is like you're throwing a party that goes haywire on Facebook. Everyone's invited, I, I, but you, you know, I have drinks for 12 people. What, what, what did they think the people were gonna do? Like what kind of jobs did they think people were gonna have? Or did they immediately say you're taken care of for a year? You know, we hear these stories out of well, Germany. Well, the government wanted to start a camel farm in Gothenburg. Well, that was one, of a, one experiment for yeah. some, and that's a, yeah. That was crazy. Um, that actually and like sort of racist. Or, and uh, sort of racist. Yeah. Uh, but no, we can't give you a proper job, but we'll give you some subsidies. Start a camel farm. You should yeah. be good at that. And right. also, we have plenty of camels in Sweden. 
No, we don't. We so, have reindeer. So truly, the people come in, and as you said, they're often fleeing war. You have sympathies with all these people. The government then says, here's some stuff, but you can't you have do- it forever, although they sort of do have it forever, but not mm. just that you can't have it forever. It's a limited amount of stuff, right? You, we can't put you... And then... then they can turn around and say, see, we're also racist because we didn't make you millionaires in night one. And, and the rest exactly. Uh, yeah. They get a flat. They get a, a minimum uh, uh, living subsidy. subsidy. Uh, but, and then uh, they are expected to vote left. And that is what it looks like. If you break down the statistics of mu- <coughs> different municipalities and, and how they vote. I mean, in Rosengård in Malmö, it was like eight, uh, 70 to 90% worked for the social democrat or the left. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, there, there, you know, we have the numbers for all of that. But well, what's happened is, tragically, we have created a tremendous segregation. Yeah. Well, we, a new underclass, if you will, uh, an immigrant underclass, which Sweden never had. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how to deal with it. And we're also running out of money because we have the most expensive welfare system in the world. And now we're trying to deal with it. it. Nobody knows what to do. This is a, a, a sort of dangerous question in a way, but I think these conversations always end up here, which is, do you think in a weird way this then breeds racism? Yes. That, that good-intentioned people, right? You, I mean, you just made it very clear. You have no ill will towards these people. But then these people come into these countries. They're given these things. They demand more. The politicians use them for votes. And then good people who are not racist but maybe don't have a lot of time to think about all these things, suddenly start becoming kind of racist. It's just, it's just a sad fact of humanity. Absolutely, and I think it goes both ways. I think uh, the Swedes wanted to invite uh, poor people from the third world to come and live in Sweden because they wanted to feel good themselves, but uh, uh, also they thought everyone would want to become Swedish, of course. But then they get a lot of immigrants, and the immigrants look at the Swedish society, and they're like, mm, maybe I'm, I'm going to keep some of my own culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't think this is so great. And if you were to sort of... And, and also, if you keep them out of the system and you never let them in and you stick them in ghettos, uh, of course they will start to hate you. And there's a weird thing that I think Europe has that America doesn't have, which is that if you were to assimilate them more, sort of push more of a Swedish culture on them, that would be against Swedish nature in a bizarre way. Where in America, we have a melting pot here, so mm. come here with all of your traditions and all of those things, but mix into the fabric of America where Europe has more of a, a ghettoization of culture. This, I think the reason America can, can do this better is because your country is founded on the principle of individuality and individuals, whereas Sweden is founded on the idea of collectivism. And that makes it really hard to break the molds. Now, I have a good friend who's he's work, he's doing a lot of work with <clears throat> newly arrived uh, Afghan boys. And like the top question, this is Mustafa Panjshiri. The, the, the question he is most often asked by these guys is like, how do I make Swedish friends? I don't know. They never open up. I'm never in touch with them. And at the same time, I mean, this is like, again, bringing tears to my eyes. They want to work. They want to break into becoming useful. Uh, at the same time, Swedes will be telling you, oh, no, how, how you should behave. No, I couldn't possibly tell you. Just be, yeah. your, be yourself. Yes. And by, they give nothing away because they don't understand being so collectivist. Like, we have a very closed, very complicated culture. And if we want to invite people into our culture, we need to start, you know, you, here we do it this way. This is, you know, but that is considered... Um, almost racist, certainly socially aggressive, to tell people that, well, this is how we do things around here. Yeah. We take off our shoes before we come, in, come into someone's home. That is quite unique. Yeah. Yeah, it's us and the Japanese, although we're more sloppy than the Japanese, yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, uh, and because of the but, s- but there are all these of- unwritten rules. Of course there are, but for the longest time, Swedes deny that because it would be racist to admit we had our own culture. Can you guys talk a little bit about how, how you differentiate from some of the other Nordic countries? Because as I said, we always point to the Nordic countries, but Sweden is the one that we really focus on. Um, but it sounds, from what I could tell, and I did visit Denmark, and I visited Finland and uh, at a couple other places, um, Denmark doesn't seem to have the problems as much as... Well, they did up until they had those cartoonist scandals and then they sort of understood what it was all about. If you can't criticize Mohammed, that's basically blasphemy laws. 
and no modern Western state would stand for that. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about international issues instead of nonstop yelling, check out our international playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.